That's impossible. She's not a princess and extremely poor. The Dowager Princess of Wales raged. Mother, said George III, I love her very much and would rather make her my wife than a European princess. And as for titles, Sarah is a descendant of the Stuarts, but the king's mother was adamant. George III had a hard time getting the throne. He was mentally unwell. There were whispers that he had lost his mind. The crown had passed to him from his grandfather, George II, but his father died early. Augusta of Saxe Goth Altenburg, George III's mother, was never called queen, only Princess of Wales. Young George was in love. Even before he became heir to the throne, he cherished the hope of marrying for love, if only to be able to choose his own bride. Sarah Lennox was born in 1745 to the Duke of Richmond. She had several equally famous sisters. At the age of five, Sarah was left an orphan. Her upbringing was taken care of by her older sisters. At the age of 13, Sarah lived with Lady Caroline Fox, her older sister in London. Thus, Sarah was able to get to the court of George II. It was at one of the king's balls that Sarah met the future King George III. Sarah's family condoned her association with George III. They hoped Sarah would become his favorite or his wife. There have been various instances of marriages in history. However, Sarah also had feelings for Lord Newbattle. She realized that marriage to the king was unlikely and tried to find another groom. But Lord Newbattle suddenly stopped paying attention to Sarah. He had to explain that his parents were against it. He was found another bride, the Marquess of Lothian. George, on the other hand, acted embarrassed. Sarah expected the king to take more decisive steps. Would he at least make her his official favorite? But instead of his bedchamber, the king showed Sarah the gardens he had planted. He planted a rose hip in her honor. Some in the royal court called Sarah the king's bride. But soon George's mood changed. It was said that with the help of false letters, Princess of Wales defamed Sarah's honor so that George III voluntarily abandoned his beloved. Sarah Lennox received a humiliating letter. She was offered to be one of the bridesmaids of the future Queen Charlotte of mecklenburg strelitz Lady Lennox was at the king's wedding wearing a white velvet gown and a modest but diamond tiara. Despite the simplicity of the outfit, it seemed that she was the real queen here. Radiant, majestic, with a proud posture. Charlotte seemed stocky and unassuming in comparison. George hasn't changed his mind. Perhaps he would have liked to, but his mother pushed his son forward. He had no choice. Sarah hoped to marry well. For a girl of the 18th century, her desires were somewhat immodest, which is clearly seen in Sarah's letters to her older sister Louise. She was not even 18 years old at the time so it was commonplace to throw away suitors. She turned down the marriage proposal of a Scottish nobleman, the Earl of Errol. But she did marry Baronet Charles Bunbury. What attracted her to him? Charles was neither rich nor handsome. There were no children during the marriage. It was rumored that their married life was unhappy. In 1768, the whole of London's high society became convinced. Sarah gave birth to a child out of wedlock with Lord William Gordon, the second son of the Duke of Gordon. Baronet Banbury was angry, but still recognized the girl as his daughter. This was not enough for Sarah. In 1769, she ran away with William Gordon. The new lover soon had enough of Sarah's company. He left her, and the legal husband of an unfaithful and ungrateful wife back did not accept filing for divorce. So Sarah stayed at her brother's house. Given the difficulties of divorce in those days, the spouses were divorced only in 1776, that is, after seven years. In 1781, at the age of 36, Sarah remarried to George Napier, an officer who became a colonel. The marriage proved to be a successful one. It produced eight children. In 1776, the year of her divorce from her first husband, Sarah met the king a long-awaited meeting. She hoped to reawaken George's former feelings, but she noticed that the monarch was behaving strangely. The rumors must have been true. The king was losing his mind. Doctors of the 21st century suggested the king had a rare disease, porphyria. Sarah mourned his death in 1820. 
and six years later, she too passed away, surrounded by her beloved family.